Okay, so I got this mounted to the pallet here. Uh, I took this cover off uh, to mount it, obviously. Um, now this isn't perfectly flat here, so I'm gonna go ahead and face this so it's perfectly flat so there's no air gap. Um, this will be a, a replaceable top piece because uh, this is gonna have to be faced every once in a while uh, if I get too many um, knife marks on it. Okay, so I just, I just chose this point randomly here. I thought maybe this might have been one of the higher points by feeling around. Um, but I set my uh, dial indicator at zero here and just kind of ran it around here. I found that this was the lowest point right here, which is uh, uh, 21 thou below this. Okay, well that is really, really smooth. Wow, that's really nice. Could fit this cover quite tight now. And I may end up having to um, face this also like I just did um, because of the a problem I had before. I don't think the, the distance here and here is the same because the issue I had with the pallet. So I'm going to double check that and go around here and then uh, look at facing the top of this. This will have to be faced occasionally anyway. So. But I only left about 3 eighths of an inch so I really only want to face you know maybe 5 or 10 thou at a time. Okay well just as I as expected uh, I set the dial indicator over here at 0 uh, at this corner over here, I'm about 22 thou high because uh, it needs to be perfectly flat for the drag knife to work. So. Okay, well, I was about uh, two thou off from here to any point over here. Um, I will, uh, I will definitely take two thou off or something like this. Okay, so since the software that I'm going to be using for the drag knife is uh, Sheet Cam, I can't exactly use Path Pilot. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't exactly use uh, Fusion 360. I mean, you, you, you can make it work, but with what I'm doing, um, I'm going to use a uh, sheet cam. Uh, but in order to do that, I actually have to change the uh, the work offset. So basically, what I did was I went to the main screen and just typed a G55 into the MDI. And you can see it changed to G55. Uh, and as you can see on the, usually this is on tool. If you go to work. Uh, you can see G55 is now highlighted. This top one, G54, that is the work offset system for the pallet system, uh, which is based, which I'm using for uh, Fusion 360. Uh, it, it has to do with the way the drag knife works. The, the tip of the blade is actually offset from the center of the tool, as you can probably see right there and uh, that has to do with the way it manipulates the blade turning around so um, so I'm just going to go ahead and set my uh, my zeros on this corner here in uh, G55 right. okay this is the first test cut for the uh, drag knife not even sure if it's gonna 
work properly yet because I've never used this program. I could push the button and nothing happens. Not sure yet, but uh, we'll uh, see what happens here. Okay, well I just realized it's calling for tool 1, which is the tool number that I had in cheat cam. Um, I just realized that I actually have to specify the correct tool number in cheat cam, so let me re redo this. Okay, I've uh, reposted the code with the uh, proper tool number on it. Not sure if it's even going to pick up the, uh, the tool offsets on this, so we'll see what happens. Okay, there's an issue with working envelope. I actually set the working envelope to the top of this, and I guess it was having a problem with that, so I actually set it to the actual working envelope of the, the mill, and actually set the table as the same, so hopefully that will uh, resolve the problem. Well, it still has some error about being outside the working limits, and can't really be because it's inside, so... Okay, I think I managed to get it set up properly. Basically, I set my uh, my zeros on the center here. I actually used the uh, the Tormach Passive Probe and did the uh, rectangular boss, and it just kind of went around and around and and then basically found the center of this. And I set my reset my Z zero uh, there. And when I did that. It, uh, as you can see, it put the, the gasket right in the middle there, so I've got to draw like uh, lines or an outline around here so I can easily find it. I'm just kind of poking under here to see if it's approximately in position. Seems to be pretty good for now, at least for the test here. I know one video said you're supposed to orient this the way you want it to start, but I'm not sure if that's totally necessary depending upon the software, but I'll just do that for now. Okay, well it seems to be doing the correct in terms of where it landed and what it's doing, but it seems to be going like super super slow so I think I got something set wrong on the, uh, the speed okay well the problem was it was set at 0 0.039 inches per minute so I just changed it to 50 inches per minute so it should go a little faster now <laughs> Okay, well it looks like we're having a little suction problem around the edges. It doesn't like being held too far in. So, but for what it did cut, it seemed to do a pretty good job. Oh, that was a nice hole right there. Maybe I'm going to have to use a slightly bigger piece. Um, but yeah. It doesn't look like you can just leave this excess sticking out like this, so... Okay, well I changed the tape so I have more holes open so I can grab it better. I made the this the, the correct size. It actually gives me a pretty good reference on where to line it up. This thing keeps uh, falling out. I'm gonna have to figure out. A, I have to open it up a little bit so it holds a little better. 
Okay, well, that seemed to run pretty good. Let's see how the gasket turned out. Uh, looks like I may need to... These, these are actually lined up with the, uh, the holes there, so I was, didn't really want to open these up because I was afraid I was going to lose uh, suction. Um, but, uh, well, it looks like it cut, it doesn't look like it's cutting through all the way. The corners look really good, but it's still a little jagged right there. So, I don't know, I may just have to adjust my depth or something like that. Otherwise, uh, the, the cut seemed to turn out pretty good. Okay, I'm going to try this again. Um, this time I'm going to try two uh, passes or two depths of cut. Uh, as uh, Just trying to find out why it's making those... Uh, why those bumps there. I mean, there's no scoring on the... I don't know what you call the spoil board. There's no s scoring on here. So it's not actually touching this so maybe it's just not cutting deep enough or there's a possibility that it's, when it's cutting over these holes it's pushing down and it's not cutting so we uh let me try two depths of cut and see what happens better. The center always seems to be fine. Yeah, it seems to still have those little things on there. And they seem to be fairly evenly spaced. So I get this, it's this I get the suspicion that it has something to do with these holes right here. Okay, well multiple depths of cut didn't work. Um, so what I did was I basically lowered my, uh, I changed my Z height so that the blade would actually go 5,000 into the wood. Uh, I couldn't actually do that in the software like you can on uh, Infusion 360. So I actually had to change it on uh, the work offset in Pathpilot. So. Alright, let me uh, try this again and see what happens. There's further information on the Donic drag knife on uh, Donic, Donic's uh, uh, YouTube channel. He's got videos about um, setting up uh, sheet cam and all this kind of stuff and exactly how it works. Uh, if you can go and check that out if you like. Um, Alright, well, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave any comments, any suggestions or anything down below. Uh, I'm not doing those end cards on the end where they have where you can click the buttons and stuff. The the software was just uh, just took too long. It was kind of complicated to do all that. So uh, I was using Premiere Pro. I'm just going back to Windows Movie Maker for now. Uh, all right.